Hi everyone, this is Dr. Avi Agrawal from Maharishi Merkandeshwar Institute of Medical Sciences and Research, Milana Ambala. And I'll be presenting a paper on a very rare topic, that is vein of gallon aneurysmal malformations, which, which seeks to be an insight for the neurointerventional radiologist to undo the Gordian knot for surgeons. Coming to the abstract of the paper, we, uh, and vein of gallon malformations are a very rare and unique entity which forms the congenital formation, malformations of the cerebral vasculature. They are due to the arteriovenous fistulous connections of mishapen arteries in brain with a persistent embryonic precursion of the vein of gallon, which is called the median present Catholic vein of Markowski, instead of connecting with the capillaries. So we'll be reporting two cases today. The first case is that of a middle-aged man with intractable occipital headache. And the second case demonstrates the antenatal diagnosis of vein of gallon malformation in association with ventricular megaly and cardiomegaly in routine antenatal scan at 30 weeks of gestation in a twin pregnancy. Considering the rarity of these lesions, there are very few studies that have been able to adequately diagnose VOGM. So this, this makes the study very essential, radically essential for continuing developments in the diagnostic aspects of diagnosing and managing these lesions. Uh, ultrasound is the primary and uh, primary screening modality for vein of gallon malformations, followed by MRI, which is the diagnosis of choice. Coming to the introduction, vein of gallon malformations are a very rare arteriovenous fistulas which constitute less than 1% of all cerebrovascular malformations. And they represent only 30% of the symptomatic vascular malformations in the pediatric age group. These lesions can be characterized by the presence of arteriovenous shunts, keeping median present cephalic vein patent, causing high flow pressure related aneurysm, aneurysmal dilatation in the midline, forming a large venous pouch just behind the third ventricle. Steenhill in 1985, in, sorry, in 1895, made the first reference to the Galilic malformation, referring it to as Varix aneurysm. Though these lesions are very uncommon, they are of special interest to the interventional neuroradiologist because endovascular therapy has alone itself to be proved as an effective and the only safe therapeutic modality. These lesions have been termed as the Gordian knot for cerebrovascular surgery because of the major problems being faced during the surgery, which are as follows. These malformations are very deep seated and have high flow shunt across them, which makes it very difficult during the surgery. They have got poor myelination of the brain parenchyma. Their tendency to tear easily on retraction and the ventricular shunting may worsen the cerebral venous hypertension. The case one is that of a 35-year-old man who presented with intractable occipital headache for last five months. The patient was being evaluated for headache when his vitals were within normal limits and all the lab investigations were also normal. The patient uh, during physical examination showed a GCS of 15 by 15 with optimal ophthalmological examination. And there was no significant history of any seizure or loss of consciousness or ENT bleed, vomiting or any other weakness. So the cause tended to be a query. But then he went to see MR brain with MRA scan, which revealed a well circumscribed T2 weighted hypo intense oval midline lesion, which measured approximately 30 into 25 into 23 mm, just dorsal to the third ventricle, as shown in figure one. In continuity with dilated straight sinuses and the dilated bilateral transverse sinuses, that's suggestive of vein of gallon aneurysmal malformation. This malformation also caused mass effect on midbrain, causing compression of aqueduct, resulting in aqueductal stenosis and thus upstream hydrocephalus. This is a CMR T2 weighted and T1 weighted post contrast image showing aneurysmal dilatation of the midline median present cephalic vein just behind the third ventricle, which was suggestive of the vein of gallon on axial sections. Figure two suggests 
the flare and the T1 weighted post contrast images of median present cephalic vein on sagittal sections showing the drainage into the straight sinus and the torcula of herophili with aqueductal compression on midbrain and resultant upstream hydrocephalus. Figure 3 is a MRA scan which shows multiple arterial feeders from bilateral posterior cerebral arteries and the basilar arteries attaching to the aneurysmal arteriovenous aneurysm without any intervening nidus, that is the capillaries. So, uh, as these malformations are direct connection between the arteries and veins, uh, there can be multiple arterial feeders which originated from bilateral PCAs and basilar arteries in this case. And they were drained by right internal cerebral vein and the right basal vein of Rosenthal with evidence of multiple dilated venous channels from inferior sagittal sinuses and superficial cortical veins as shown in figure 4. Due to the high rate of morbidity and risk ratio associated with vein of gallant malformations, the patient and his family members chose to continue on supportive treatment and observation. This is another image which shows a midline dorsal venous pouch of vein of gallant malformation, just dorsal to the third ventricle, showing a flow void on MRI scan on sagittal T2 weighted image with multiple arterial feeders and dilated venous channels and sinuses at specifically two different distinct levels. There was another case where a twin, pregnant, twin pregnancy woman presented for antenatal scan at 30 weeks of gestation. She was 28 years old and in fetus B, we could evaluate these things. There was a tubular dilated anechoic structure draining blood from the dilated falcine sinus into the transverse sinus. The image B shows the pulsatile and the turbulent flow on color Doppler, with the, which was characteristic and consistent with vein of Callan malformation. So on transabdominal scan of fetus B, neurosonographically, uh, it was revealed that a tubular dilated anechoic structure was coursing from the splenum of the corpus callosum towards the cisterna magna, showing a pulsatile and turbulent blood flow, draining the dilated falcine sinuses and the torcular hilophila into the dilated transverse sinuses, which was suggestive and consistent with vein of Callan aneurysmal malformation with mild uh, cerebral ventricular mechanism as the association. Cross section of the fetal B, chest. Uh, showed slightly enlarged area of fetal heart in relation to the area of chest, which was suggestive of mild cardiomegaly. These findings of cerebral venous hypertension and cardiomegaly were consistent with vein of gallon, for which counseling and neurosurgical consultation of the parents was done. Coming to the discussion of the paper, uh, development of the telencephalic choroid plexus is accompanied by simultaneous differentiation of the transit venous structure, which drains these choroid plexuses and has, has been designated as median present cephalic vein or the primitive internal cerebral vein. By the 11th week, there is formation of paired internal cerebral veins, which annexes or uh, drains the venous drainage of these choroid plexuses. Formation of these internal cerebral veins results in regress regression of the median present Catholic vein, which was the primitive structure, except, except for its most caudal part, which joins the internal cerebral veins to form the vein of Catholic. There's a flowchart which we have drafted explaining the pathophysiology of the vein of Gallen malformations. So what happens is normally the uh, developing internal cerebral veins they annex the drainage of the fetal choroid plexus and the medial present cephalic vein progresses. However, after birth, there is uh, high pressure from the arteries communicating with the venous system directly in case of these malformations as the capillaries are lacking. And uh, after birth, there is exclusion of the low resistance of the placental circulation as well. There is a resultant abrupt increase of flow across these 
malformations resulting in vein of Callan malformation or the patent median prosencephalic vein. So this abrupt increase in the flow across this arteriovenous malformation is can be can be due to three main reasons being restriction of the venous drainage or there is or there being a decreased diastolic pressure in aorta or a compensatory increase in cardiac output to maintain the perfusion so uh, restriction of venous drainage could be due to poorly developed venous drainage system or the secondary venous stenosis venous occlusion or a high flow of AV shunt. This all results in a cerebral venous hypertension. This system of uh, creating a hypertension at the cerebral venous level causes the main neurological effects. So we'll be classifying the pathophysiology into the neurological effects and the cardiological effects. So cerebral venous hypertension causes the neurological events, events which being cerebral edema, hydrocephalus, microcephaly, hypoxia, headaches, seizures, intracranial bleed, and subarachnoid hemorrhages, focal neurological deficit, and many more. There can also be a progressive cerebral parenchymal damage from the venous hypertension or hypoxia, which may lead to mental retardation, cognitive impairment, and delayed milestones or failure to thrive. There can also be a collateral drainage into cavernous sinuses as a compensation, which can lead to increased flow in facial veins and derivative venous plexuses, forming their prominence and epistaxis or proptosis. If there is a decreased diastolic pressure in aorta, or if there is compensatory increase in cardio cardiac output to maintain the perfusion, we'll have the features of cardiac, cardiac manifestations, which being um, pulmonary hypertension, High, card, high output cardiac failure and cardiomegaly. There can also be reduced subendocardial or coronary flow leading to myocardial ischemia. And if there is excessive flow across the pulmonary circulation, it could lead to pulmonary hypertension. There will also be increased venous return in compensation to the increased cardiac output, which may lead to uh, more shunting of blood from right to left side especially across the patent ductus arteriosus and the patent foramen vein, leading to cyanosis. So these were the pathophysiological features and their clinical manifestations. Principal feeders of the malformation are those that supply the tila corrida and the quadrigeminal plate. These include the anterior or the present Catholic group, which consists of anterior cerebral, anterior choroidal, middle cerebral, and posterior lateral choroidal arteries, and the posterior or the mesencephalic group, which consists of posterior medial choroidal, posterior thalamo perforating, quadrigeminal, and superior cerebellar arteries. There can be abnormal flow through the fistulas, which retards the normal involution of the embryonic vein, that is the median person cephalic vein, and prohibits the development of the vein of Callan. These, uh, this uh, non-regression of median present Catholic vein, which drains the shunt, lacks a fibrous solid elastic wall, and it lies free in the subarachnoid space, therefore ballooning out to a larger size, especially dorsal to the third ventricle. So coming to the modalities for screening and diagnosing and diagnosis of uh, vein of Callan malformations. Ultrasound, uh, it aids in the identification of vein of Callan, especially in third trimester, and which being a modality of choice and the only modality to screen in uh, antenatal females. And it helps in differentiation from other non-vascular space-occupying lesions, along with assessing the status of the fetal cardiovascular system or neurological system. It demonstrates a sonolucent venous sac as a mass located posterior to third ventricle with pulsatile flow and differentiates it from other midline cystic lesions as it was in, the, in this uh, paper as well. On axial brain CT, uh, there can be features of cerebral parenchymal damage in the form of uh, diffuse cerebral atrophy, periventricular white matter hypodensities, and dilated ventricular system. 
They can also be well-defined multi-lobulated intensity enhancing lesions within the cistern of vellum interposition. MRI is the modality of choice for these malformations, demonstrating the location, precise location of this fistula and the presence of the needles, maybe the arterial as well as the venous and the relationship between different pathological components. MR angiography is used as a non-invasive tool and it is an alternative to diagnostic angiographic studies. However, angiography remains the gold standard for the diagnosis of vein of calor malformations, especially in evaluating small feeders supplying the fistula as well as the dynamic aspects of the venous drainage of the normal vein and of this arteriovenous shunt. These malformations can also be associated with other syndromes, especially like Turner syndrome, blue rubber syndrome, supernumerary digits, hypospadias, and some cardiac manifestations like transposition of great vessels or aortic stenosis and right-sided aortic arch. This image shows the uh, ideal treatment which is being followed nowadays for vein of calic malformations, which involves the embolization and the endovascular therapy, especially by a neurointerventional radiologist. So uh, um, a microcatheter is inserted and advanced up to the embolization site where uh, glue and other embolizing agents are injected into the vessels causing their regression. However, aggressive medical management is needed in some, uh, needed in most cases, most mostly to uh, postpone, postpone the intervention till up to five to six months of age when the intervention becomes easier and safer. In cases of congestive cardiac failure in a neonate who is refractory to medical treatment, emergency embolization is the need of indication. In neonates not presenting with cardiac failure, the aim would be to prevent the consequences of cerebral venous hypertension and thus promote normal cerebral development. Arteriovenous fistulas can also be occluded on the arterial side using embolic agents such as coils, cyanoacrylates, and detachable balloons. They can also be dealt with embolization of the venous sac as in the case of transvenous and transtorcular coil embolization which are used to achieve flow reduction across the malformations. And it is the technique of choice in patients with multiple fistulas. It results in retrograde thrombosis obliterating the fistulas and thus the malformations. This is an image post-intervention showing how the treatment was performed and the prognosis of the patient, wherein the normal brain circulation was restored after embolization and uh, it led to reduction in the size of the malformation gradually over time. So, concluding the PEP paper, uh, these entities, vein of Callan malformations, have a very varied and life-threatening clinical presentations with a characteristic, distinctive, complex angioarchitecture which is very essential for their early diagnosis, especially for a caring physician who could understand the embryological and the pathophysiological aspects and manage these lesions appropriately. Uh, both in prenatal and neonatal period or at the time of definitive intervention, managing these lesions is of course challenging. Thus, in near future and even at current scenario, the role of imaging, especially as a neurointerventional radiologist, it is very essential in making these lesions potentially curable and helping the patients to have a better prognosis and low mobility. Thank you.